what's going on guys it's winter and in typical fashion the fiesta's got a problem with the heating now you'll probably remember that we recently swapped out a faulty resistor pack which was stopping the fans from working on any setting apart from number four now as you've just seen that's happening again and it's also making one hell of a noise so the resistor that we swapped out last time has obviously blown again the original one i think was blown when i got the car so we replaced that and like i say it's now happening again i did have a bit of a scare the other week when this happened i was driving home from work and all of a sudden i just smelt this like burning smell in the car and i panicked i jumped underneath the bonnet because i thought something was on fire but everything seemed to be okay so i really couldn't work out what was going on and why I could smell this burning smell. But then I noticed something. Once again, I was only getting the fans on number four. Now, they don't really sound too bad at the moment, but as you could probably see from the start of this video, that when it's running and you're actually driving, I mean, I was only moving it backwards and forwards in my driveway, but when, when you're driving the car, it's, the noise almost changes. It felt more like it was when I brought the clutch up and down when I was like maneuvering here rather than when you're actually driving. But when you are driving down the road, it's really noisy. Like when you're doing sort of normal road speeds, it is so noisy. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna dive underneath the glove box here and we're gonna swap out this fan unit. Because what I think's happening is, I think the bearings in the fan have gone. I mean, if you listen to this one, this is the new one, well, new. There's just no noise. So if the bearings in the fan that's in the car are on the way out, then that's more than likely the cause of our noise. But it could also be why the resistor keeps blowing because it can be putting more strain on the motor and an increased load on the electrical circuit. So we're gonna change it out for this one and then hopefully it'll be a lot quieter in the car, the resistor won't keep blowing and I won't have steamy windows all the time because at the moment when I'm driving around it looks like I've been up to no good in my car. Now that motor lives behind the glove box. So first things first, we've got to take the glove box out, which is nice and simple. For these Fords anyway, you just, well, you kind of have to bend it a bit. There's like these two like stops that catch against the housing. You just kind of squeeze the, the glove box inwards and then just pop them out. And then there's just two little lugs it pulls out of on the bottom. So that's nice and easy. And then this is where the trouble starts. Now, I'm not sure if you can see in there just yet, but I will show you in a second. But basically we've got to get this in there. And I mean, it barely fits behind there as it is. I mean, it definitely doesn't go up that side. It's like way up in the back there behind the dash. Now, as soon as you get in the glove box, the first thing you're greeted with is this massive fuse box. So we're gonna have to get that out of the way because the motor lives way up in there above those two gray pipes you can see. There's like a cover behind there. So we've got to get this off and there's just two 10 mil bolts here and here. And then that should, well, it won't come out, but we'll be able to lever it down out of the way and just sort of pop it down here for now. And hopefully that'll give us enough space to get that monstrosity of a motor in if we can get the old one out. So like I said, the first thing to do is just to remove these two 10 mil bolts holding the fuse box in. So I'm just gonna go ahead and whip those out. Okay, so the fuse box kind of just pulls away and you can you can just about lean it off to the side. I don't want to put too much strain on it because of the wires and it naturally wants to fall to the side we need to be, but you can just sort of hold it up out of the way. Now, there is also this air duct thing on the in the way, but where we want to go is is this like cover. You see that screw down there? It's there's a few more up and around there, but that cover basically holds the fan behind it. And we've got to get this air duct off and there is a screw in the back of this tab here. Like, uh, if I can, like up behind there, my finger's touching that. So that's, that's that air duct there. If you can see that 
I've tried this once before and I couldn't find that screw, but now I know where it is. I'm gonna try undoing that and see if we can get that out. I'm not sure what size it is, but I'll let you know once I figure it out. You'll have to excuse the lighting, but the screw in question is a T25 Torx screw and it's just up there. There we go. Now with a bit of luck, this big air duct should now, yes, come out. Okay, so really you do just have to pull on it. It just looks like that. Oh. So we'll just take a quick look up in here. Can we see? Oh, is it up there? Yeah, oh, there you go. That's the, the kind of opening it sits in up there. I'm guessing. So the fan is behind that funny looking thing. There's five screws holding this on. I think there's, I'll see what we can see. This is the, Jesus. There's one up there, like top left. There's one up there, which you can just see just below and to the left of that white brackety thing. One bottom left. Is there one? Like under there, I can't see. Can't see below them pipes. Oh yeah, it looks like there's one down there, potentially. If that's part of that, I'm not sure. And then there's another one up there, like top right. There's an electrical connector that needs to come off. Yeah, if I find any more, I'll let you know. Get the electrical connector first. I think there's just like a, a tab on the bottom side and then that just pulls out. So we'll just start undoing all these screws and then hopefully we can just get this fan out. It's actually, oh no. Ah, there it is. Whew. Okay, one. Okay, so I think that is all the screws holding this cover on. Now, a couple of things are concerning me. One being that it's still not coming off, but that's not my main concern. My main concern is that the three screws which were hardest to get to only seem to be on hand tight. Whereas the two easy ones were done up properly. So I'm wondering whether someone's had this out and changed it before. Because if they have, then this might not fix our problem. But my other concern is that it's still not moving. So I'm not sure how we get it out. I must have missed a screw, but like it, it just doesn't budge. So I'll keep trying and see what happens. And there's actually a cable. Ah, I can see it now. I don't know if you can quite see that but there's a so this moves and there's a cable that pulls on that up there see that that white piece which sort of makes that move there's the fan behind there so I think the reason this won't come off is because that is still attached up there now I can't quite it says in the manual that you have to detach the cable but I don't quite know how you do that and I'm worried that Oh, okay, so that's cool. That little piece just pulls out the top of it. So that's cool. Uh, but this cover still won't come off. I don't know why. So I'm gonna yank at that for a while and once I've broken that, I'll let you know. Okay, so this cover is an absolute pig to remove. I think I've got it free now. If I can, yeah, there we go. But I've, you see there's like this almost like cagey kind of thing. Get that out of the way. Yeah, well, I've snapped some of the pieces of plastic on that, trying to pull it out. This part here, I think, goes up to like 
a vent somewhere. I don't know whether that's where it comes in from like the heater matrix or like from outside the car or where quite, but it's just a case of levering this bad boy out now. So yeah, I kind of, while it was sat in there, I kind of got my hand in behind this bit and pulled that way, which freed up part of it. And then I got a finger down in there. See, that's where that cable sits. I just put my finger down there, pulled it that way, and then this bit popped out. But yeah, there is the fan. So I think, the, yeah, the fan's already loose. So you just kind of, I assume the same screws that hold the cover on hold this in. So you, I've already done done the connector. I think you pull it, I've seen another guide online. It says you pull it out that way. And cause one of the, sorry, I'm finding it really hard to film in here. One of the tabs that holds it in is like behind them pipes. You have to pull it out and like twist it. Oh, wow. I don't know whether, <laughs> I don't know whether this fan's caught on something in here, but I've just tried spinning it with my finger and it's, can sort of see why maybe this is given us an issue. It was, it's felt really grindy, but I don't know like whether it's caught on some at the moment. So it's taking a lot of wiggling. I don't know how much you guys can see. I've got so many lights on the go in here, but it took some wiggling, but it's free. So that lug, it was, it was telling me to twist it like downwards, like, sorry, like that way to clear these pipes, but I found going the other way, got it up and over most of them. Oh my God. It's just getting stuck on everything. Like, oh, I see what's, oh shit. We're stuck on this metal bracket now. Stuck on that. I just pushed it out of the way. Oh my God. Right, it's out. Whew. Okay, so while I've got this motor out, I just wanted to give you a quick comparison to the other one. And it's actually not as bad as I thought, but it, it feels a bit more like there's a bit, like there's some resistance in it, but it doesn't sound that bad. Have a listen. I could imagine if that's spinning like at the, you know, proper speed, then maybe, where's the new one? Well, I say new. It's obviously off eBay. So we'll, sort, we'll just test this one again. Ah, that, to be fair. I mean, you can obviously, there's the noise of me like catching it as I spin it, but. In person, I can tell it's better and obviously I can feel it, but. I don't know, we'll see. We'll put this one in and see if it makes a difference. So, I mean, putting this motor back in should really just be the reverse of taking it out. I think it's gonna be an absolute nightmare trying to get this in here, but I mean, doesn't even have, there's not even space for it really, but uh, I did just go like inside the sort of, what would you call it, like the void that this thing sits in just to check there's no like, you know, nothing in there that was catching on. I couldn't find anything, so I couldn't see anything. So I think that's all fine. Yeah, okay, so I've got that stuck already. My God. Okay, so there's not an awful lot of space, but once you get past this bracket that the, um, that the fuse box sits in, it's just a, uh, okay, I'm stuck on something else now. You're not gonna believe this, I actually had this in a minute ago, but I did it off camera and I couldn't, I wanted to get it back out and actually show you how to get it back, how to get it in, but now I seem to be stuck again. Oh, I know what it might be. That stupid cable thing might get in the way. That is certainly getting in the way. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. Bit of brute force. So that's that. Next, I suppose we've got to put this cover back on. Right. Okay, so I got that cover back on. And now I've got the fun of 
trying to line up all these screws and get them back in. So I'm not going to be able to film me doing all of these because some of them are like buried way back in there. See, but it's the five we took out before. Oh, I don't know if I actually showed you them when this thing came out. So that was silly of me. But there's this one here. Right, there's one there, just where the bottom of the ratchet is now. There's one up there, which you can just see, which I've already put that one in, because that was the one that kind of located the whole thing. Um, then there's one just up there, you can just see, up just under this silver bracky thing here. And then I think there's one uh, one that you get to under there, yeah, just at the bottom of that pipe, under that pipe. There's that's those five, and then that's in, and then I've just got to put that cable thing back in there. I tried to do it before I put all the screws back in, but that's no good because otherwise the whole bra that whole cover thing just falls off. So put the screws in, put that back on, put that duct in, put that back on, and then we can see if it's made a difference. I've actually got to use my phone for this bit. Thought I'd bring you along for the ride. I'm trying to use the camera to line up this screw with that hole. No way. I only filmed it because I thought I'd miss and get angry. The screw's stuck into something, so I'm just going to wind it in with a ratchet and see how we get on. That's that cover back on. Oh, I nearly forgot that cable. So that cable thing is up there and it's gotta be pressed into like this, this flap thing. So it only goes in one way round and which way round that is, I have no idea. So it's just gonna be a case of trial and error until that clicks in. But anyway, you just push that into there and somehow you gotta push that down in and then when you, whatever that, whatever pulls that cable, when it pulls it, it opens that, there you go. Stupid cable back in. It it just doesn't click in, but like it's turning turning that thing now. I might have accidentally lost my rag with this as well and broke it. Oh, and I also snapped all the little stupid plastic housing off there, which I didn't mean to do, but basically that stupid thing in there wouldn't click in. I kind of spun it that way so it was open, pressed upwards from the one side, down with the with the cable clip thing. I'm gonna plug the electrical connector in. I can't even, oh, there we go. Next is that air duct, wherever the hell that's gone. It is pitch black outside now. I think, I think it's like, I don't know what time it is. Okay, so just kind of wedge that back up in there. And then this piece just sort of meets up with, with there. And then that kind of just seats into place. Right, this air duct's back in. Okay, so just need to put the fuse box panel back in, but I'm gonna need two hands, I think, to do it because I've gotta like hold it in place and then put these bolts in, so I'm not gonna be able to show you that, but I'm just gonna have to hold it in and screw those two bolts like into this bracket at the back there. Oh, right, I sat back in. I suppose maybe we should just Try the fans and see if we get any joy with the noise. So, oh, oh, listen to that. Oh, it's so much quieter. Oh, it was definitely our issue. Wow. That's so much quieter. I'll tell you what I'd really like to find out. And that's what that, that flap thing. Uh, maybe it's the reset, is it? Okay, so I think that flap thing. Ah. There you go. So all that is, is the reset. That's what that flap thing was. At least now I know what that is. So that's good. But yeah. Oh, that's so much better. I can't believe that's actually fixed it. 
none of none of that grinding noise anymore. That's that's great. I'm I'm so happy with that. Right, we still only got number four, so let's go change this resistor. Again. Now, I know you've already seen me do this once, so we're not going to go through a whole how to do this bit. We're just going to get it done. Let's go. Oh. Okay, so moment of truth, let's find out if that fixed it. Oh, I don't know if you can hear that on the camera, but that's number one, and I can hear it. You probably can't pick that up, it's so quiet, luckily. Number two. Number three. And four. There we go, happy days. So there we have it, that is exactly what we wanted. We've got no more grinding noises because we replaced that motor. So I'm guessing the bearings were shot and then, yeah, it was like too much strain on the electrical circuit trying to spin the motor, I guess. And that's why it probably blew the resistor. So yeah, we fixed, fixed the horrible grinding noise and we've also fixed numbers one, two and three not working. So that's, that's a win for me. I'm so happy, but I'm also freezing cold. It's absolutely Baltic out here. But it was absolutely Baltic in the car trying to drive around and not use number four because it was doing my head in with the noise and everything. So, yeah, now it's, well, I'm going to go and get in the warm and I can also get warm in my car. So that's going to wrap it up. Thanks for watching. See you next time.